Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very interesting conversation about the impact of low-code application platforms in the healthcare industry. My name is Arslan Kashif and I head marketing for the Product Engineering Services Business Unit. And I'm very excited to have two gentlemen who are going to be bringing in very different perspectives as far as this topic is concerned. First and foremost, we have uh, Sundar Ramaswamy, who is the Senior Vice President and Head of the DPA Center of Excellence at Happiest Minds. And uh, along with him, riding co-chair is Srinivas Iyengar, who happens to be a VP and Head of the Healthcare and Life Sciences Business at Happiest Minds. Both of them are going to be bringing in their perspective and their opinions as far as this topic is concerned, and we hope that you'll enjoy it. So without any further ado, gentlemen, let's uh, get right into it. Sundar, Larry Ellison once famously or infamously said that uh, the tech industry is a lot like the fashion industry. Now, what he basically meant was every six months or a year, there are all of these new terms popping up out of the blue, and they get everyone excited and raring to go. Uh, off late, one of those terms has been LCAP or low-code application platforms. And I think there's a lot of chatter about it. The analyst community in particular seems to be very, very gung-ho and excited. In fact, I have some numbers wherein Gartner is saying that by 2025, 70% of new applications will be developed using LCAP. Forrester predicts that spending on LCAP will rise to 21.2 billion by 2022. Now, these are some big, big numbers that are coming in. And Sundar, let me bring you in here at this point and ask you, what are you seeing in the industry when you talk to customers and prospects? Are you seeing the same kind of enthusiasm and excitement being mirrored? And uh, we'll get to the healthcare piece in a bit with Srini, but which are some of the industries, in your opinion, that are showing the most interest in low-code uh, application platforms right now? Sure, Arslan. Thanks for the question. And absolutely, I share that same excitement about the low-code application platforms and more particularly the use of it for rapid application development. Now, IT, uh, the IT function of any organization is always looking for innovation uh, that can drive, uh, drive down costs, bring more agility into the business. And the low code application platform is one such way by which you know, that, that's uh, really been made possible. Uh, so I see a lot of excitement within the CIOs and CTOs uh, you know, across the globe. Uh, they're looking at wanting to streamline their application development process and increasingly looking at LCAP as an option to do it. Now to the second part of your question, uh, traditionally we have always found that the BFSI, healthcare, retail, CPG, manufacturing, these are the industries that always led the way in any digital transformation study and, and innovation. This is no different. The only difference that I would say is the different themes by which they're embracing LCAP is different. So if you're looking for a theme around modernization of legacy apps, um, that's a theme that typically BFSI clients are uh, taking, taking the lead on. If you're looking at a theme on, uh, you know, kind of moving away from existing ERP or extending the life of your ERP systems and get business agility into your, into your business, we're seeing retail CPG and manufacturing companies do that. And then finally, if you're looking at a theme around driving uh, better customer experience apps quickly and, you know, uh, wider adoption of employee experience related apps uh, across the business, you're seeing that in any consumer facing industry taking the lead. So different themes, but traditionally, these are the verticals that we are seeing a lot of adoption of LCAP for. Sure. Thanks, Sundar. Uh, now, Srini, you and I have discussed this many times, and I know that you're a huge proponent of uh, the potential of LCAP in healthcare. From what we typically see in the healthcare space, the core enterprise systems are comprised of several specialized legacy applications and platforms that have been around for decades. And what happens is over a period of time, they get intertwined and it gets very difficult and cumbersome to maintain them. In fact, it's widely estimated that if you look at the total cost of ownership of a software application, 80% of it is actually just application maintenance costs. And I'm sure LCAP can actually help with that. So given this kind of a background, starting a new application development program can seem a very daunting experience because you're trying to make sure that it doesn't turn out into this long drawn out multi-year engagement. So can you talk to us a little bit about how the healthcare industry has been embracing the idea of LCAP and how do you see it evolving, particularly in, within the context of programs that are being run by uh, healthcare providers, payers, and perhaps even enterprises? 
Sure. Thanks, Tesla. So if you look at last 15 months, you know, due to COVID-19, many of the healthcare organizations, uh, they uh, got much of their new IT development to a grinding halt. Uh, naturally, they had to uh, reprioritize themselves and focus on care delivery, which is their uh, major business, right? Post-COVID, there are now new pressing needs. Like, for example, we have to focus on telehealth, remote patient monitoring. So equitable access to care, it's a new terminology that is uh, being uh, uh, developed by the healthcare organizations. Uh, care equity, and also preventive disease control. So these are some of the important areas that we've been working on post-COVID. So also uh, CMS has been working on building guidelines on the concept of uh, what we call as hospital beyond walls and promoting hospitals to think of ways and means of achieving this. Earlier to this, industry's uh, traditional focus by and large was at point of care. And now it has been transforming towards what we call as a point of need. So this change is now happening at an extremely rapid uh, pace. For your reference, I'm quoting the pre-COVID priority items that are yet to be accomplished by us. Uh, for example, we were working on patient involvement concept of care team, seamless interoperability. So data democratization was a, a big point of discussion. So, and of course, secure ecosystem was a major focus area for us. So with this now healthcare has two things to accomplish, right? We have a backlog of pre-COVID initiatives uh, that we have to complete and then work on the newer models of care, which has now become a pressing need at this point of time, right? So more than money, we don't have time to do all these things from scratch. Hence, health industry, uh, we've been looking at innovative ways to accomplishing this need uh, that is there in the industry today. So because of this, you know, I personally believe LCAP is one of the ways to achieve this humongous task that is in front of us. And uh, because this brings in a very significant development speed for us. Thanks. Sure, Shree. So it, it sounds very exciting. And obviously the upside of it is quite apparent. But Sundar, is it uh, really possible, especially in an industry like healthcare, that is sensitive to certain external variables, is it really possible to build enterprise-grade applications using an LCAP approach? And uh, how would it really address some of the concerns that people are likely to have about enterprise security, scalability, and reliability? So, Arslan, you know, there are many use cases of complex and large applications built on LCAP. Uh, not only just the internal facing uh, enterprise wide apps that get built, but also customer facing apps that have been successfully built and deployed using LCAP. So for example, you can have KYC processes of a bank, or you can have, let's say a customer self-service portal for a telecom player. These are all applications that have already been built to scale to millions of customers, uh, ensuring near 100% time uptime uh, and 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 really adhering to the highest level of security since you are you are capturing a lot of sensitive customer information, uh, you know, in, in these transactions. So these have all all been done uh, on LCAP. So uh, the cases of healthcare uh, don't daunt uh, uh, you know the the capabilities of an LA, LCAP uh, you know kind of uh, platform. Uh, so we can really build easy, scalable, reliable, secure applications using LCAP without, without any problem. However, uh, you know, to ensure this, you need a couple of things to come together. The first is you should have an LCAP platform that is robust enough, uh, that is built on the latest technology to be able to adhere to all your needs on reliability, scalability, and, and, and security. The second is how you build the platform uh, the application on the platform uh, using appropriate design principles and architecture will 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 be critically uh, necessary uh, you know to 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 ensure all the non functional requirements are are met so you know those are possible now we we've, we've kind of chosen a leading lcap uh, provider out systems and have worked with them uh, to to actually build these apps already, uh, also in the healthcare domain. So, in a sense, uh, to answer your question, it can be done, and we are 
we are working with one such LCAP tool uh, to enable this for our clients. Shuni, I can already sense that you're looking to add to that as well. So if you can please go ahead. Sure. Yeah. I can actually add with some more examples on uh, what we've been doing. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, where industry is uh, really utilizing LCAP platforms, right? So a couple of recent implementations that I can think of has been on uh, building very highly customized EMRs for hospital chains, which are focused on specialty areas like cancer and uh, fertility clinics. One of the most interesting one that uh, I have seen is on how life science companies who are historically slow in uh, technology adoption now, they have been a primary market for many local application platforms. So that was a little surprise one for me. So local technology is used by them to collect massive amount of data from multiple sources and for their downstream usage. Um, organizations which are also working on population health has quietly accepted uh, local platforms for rapidly building applications to capture the social determinants and also to collect in recent times, um, we're calling this as patient-generated health data, PGHD in short. So collectively, the entire data set would be used by uh, them for downstream analytics. And as mentioned by Sundar, uh, some of these applications uh, need not be internal personas, but also uh, by the external ones as well. Sure. So now this question is actually for both of you. Uh, we've seen that one of the impacts of the pandemic, especially on the healthcare vertical, has been a spike in the need for on-demand services. Now, care providers are expected to enable real-time transactions, ease, convenience, and simplicity. So in such a scenario, how do you think low-code application platforms can really enable some of these outcomes? And uh, what are some of the features that they need to keep in mind while selecting a best-fit LCAP platform? Sure. Why don't I start first? Let's start with the basic principles of the objectives with which organizations typically tend to choose an LCAP platform. They typically have three types of needs. They would like to one, simplify the app development, maintenance and operations that they are engaging on. The second is they want to you know, just ease the building of apps with superior UI UX capabilities. And thirdly, uh, they would like to lower the total cost of ownership for any, uh, any such app build outs. Now, keeping in mind these three objectives, when organizations are choosing an LCAP provider, they need to choose uh, based on you know, some four or five different criteria, right? So first is, do, does my LCAP provider or platform provide pre-built code components that can be easily configured into building newer code uh, or, or in, integrated into newer applications? Second, do they, they really have pre-built connectors with typical industry standard systems like SAP, Salesforce, and the likes. Third, do they have an ecosystem of developers uh, you know, who are already trained and be ready to be deployed for any rapid scale up of LCAP development? Fourth, do they have the flexibility of deploying this application that they build across various clouds? Do they also have the flexibility on getting it uh, on-premise in case they would like to exit uh, the 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 uh, cloud version of uh, of the LCAP provider, and and finally and most importantly, are there already reference use cases of applications that have been built using that platform? Now, using all these four or five different uh, you know kind of criteria, one can choose the right LCAP provider uh, and platform for yourself. So as we know, you know healthcare and life sciences market it's highly interoperable. So the standards like HL7, HIPAA, FIRE, it has been accepted uh, worldwide mostly. So any platform that we choose today to build healthcare applications has to be contextualized to the industry, which also means that any low-code application platform cannot work only horizontal across industries, and they have to bring in the required domain flavor. So this becomes a very critical piece in the puzzle. With this background, you must analyze the following. Does the platform have a healthcare common data model, which meets your required standards? Do they offer FHIR interface on top of the common data model? And if you look at many of the local application platform companies uh, today, 
Um, they're also building marketplace components, which could be plug and play ones. Currently, most of the such platforms offering the marketplace components are evolving. Hence, they name it as intentional gaps. But my recommendation is you must verify the laundry list of such components, which are readily available and it could be inherited easily by your organization. So Sundar, I was just exploring and uh, trying to connect the dots over here and perhaps they connect, perhaps they don't, but uh, there are a lot of new disruptive technologies coming up. You have artificial intelligence, which has been around for a while. You have AR, MR. There's so much of chat about the metaverse and of course the Web 3.0. So I was just wondering, organizations that adopt LCAP, do they have a leg up or an advantage in terms of speed? in the way they can leverage some of these other disruptive technologies. And uh, secondly, if an organization has to really get started with their LCAP journey, is there like a five-step process that you have in mind that would ease out their journey as such? Of course, uh, Arslan, and I, I, I do believe that LCAP provides a leg up for adopting various different uh, technologies like AI, AR, MR, et cetera. So let's start from the basic principles. LCAP enables a developer to reduce their efforts in building, deploying, and managing the code base, uh, you know, in while building the application, and just ensure that he or she focuses on the application logic and features. In my mind, this is leading to some level of democratization of application development, and you are having a newer set of business or uh, other tech users being increasingly being able to participate in the application development process. In fact, LCAPs are now building SDKs or connectors where, you know, uh, the, the AR content or enabling APIs where a lot of the AI ML libraries can be included in one code. So what we are seeing is sophisticated, complex applications are taking advantage of the latest tech trends on AI, AR ML. In fact, an example of that is we are combining, uh, you know, the capabilities of an AI ML tool in computer vision uh, along with a wrapper in, in out systems to build a invoice processing or a claims management application uh, that can take advantage of the latest AI ML techniques, right? So that's that's what we are doing. Now to the second part of your question, uh, Arslan, to, to ensure organizations can take advantage of their cap journey, uh, you know, organizations are addressing it in different ways, but there are five common themes that I'm seeing in organizations that are serious and truly succeeding in adopting the LCAP technologies. The first is that they have top level uh, buy-in, ideally a CXO level champion. Secondly, they have well-defined budget to execute all these automation-led initiatives leveraging LCAP. Thirdly, they have defined very clearly metrics and targets uh, for these initiatives and are uh, you know, reviewing it in a periodic manner. A fourth, they have identified a center of excellence team that they uh, they can leverage to set up, build, design, lead such LCAP initiatives. And finally, and most importantly, they are building an ecosystem and a network of uh, you know experts and vendors uh, who can fast track their build out and operationalizing of these LCAP stories. Through these five step process or five different ways, uh, you know, we have seen organizations leapfrog on their LCAP journey and, and truly attain success. So thanks, Sundar. And uh, Srini, as we look to wind up over here, I was just wondering if you have noticed any kind of a pattern in terms of certain functions being more favorably disposed towards adoption of LCAP. Now, particularly in the healthcare space, are there certain functions, be it product, finance, marketing, they're beating the drum the loudest for embracing LCAP? Sure. So as I had uh, mentioned earlier, um, I've seen like sales companies uh, quickly uh, picking up LCAP and uh, there's already quite a bit of re-engineering that is happening today. Tech companies are building population health solutions. Um, I can say provider organizations for specifically member outreach. Uh, so they are taking leading positions at this point of time. I always uh, recommend that any legacy modernization project must have a phase to quickly evaluate if an LCAP platform would be an alternate option. And if you're re-architecting your digital front door or digital workplace, uh, then LCAP strategy would uh, make a world of difference to you and your organization. 
So Srini, thank you so much for that. And, uh, you know, I have to say coming in, anytime you hear about LCAP for the first time, it sounds a little too good to be true. Uh, because you're talking about the idea of people with minimal to no coding experience actually helping build enterprise-grade applications. But I think from all of the examples and anecdotes that both of you shared, it does seem that it is very much possible. And these cumbersome, long drawn out, painful application development programs are a thing of the past. Uh, I certainly had a lot of fun hosting this conversation. I hope both of you enjoyed it as well. And uh, I hope our audience found it to be informative. We will be back once again with uh, another brand new topic, but uh, be sure to follow all of our social channels. And if you have any kind of question for us, then you can drop in business at the rate of happiestminds.com is our email address. Srini Sundar, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot, Aslan.